right back on me. I'm here at VidCon 2019 in London. I'm just looking around. This is my first experience at VidCon, so I'm just trying to get a handle on the creators that are going to show up here, kind of like the events and what they've got going on. And then, of course, uh, see what cameras are on this player being used. Check it out. Spin it around. <laughs> see ya. Well, I bumped into Black Magic Design to speak with them not only about the BMPCC 4K's update and with and they told me a couple of the updates that they accomplished and did. But I also wanted to find out if the 60 frames per second and uncompressed RAW would work after the update with a Samsung T5 hooked up to the USB-C port. So I'm going to test the Samsung T5 with uncompressed RAW 60 frames per second on Blackmagic Cinema Camera 4K once again because it didn't work last time. Let's see if that issue is fixed. So connecting to USB-C. Turning it on. I'll leave that sideways. It's a little loose. But it's okay. In the menu system, I'm switching it to lossless raw. And the frame rate at 60 frames per second. And let's see how much I can do with this. Here we go. Here we go. And it looks like it stops. At 7 minutes 44 seconds, it stopped. Which is fine. The fact that it could do it is, is honor enough. Try it again, new firmware doesn't do it on the Samsung T5. Maybe one day. Check it out. Stop. Hold the phone. So I did that video where I was talking about the latest Blackmagic firmware update and then they release it as I'm editing, almost outputting. So let's talk about it. I haven't used it yet. I'm using still the firmware right before the newest firmware and I'll try it out in a sec. But from what I hear, they took out Cinema D and G Raw and replaced it with Blackmagic Raw, which is exciting. Uh, no more will you have to deal with thousands of frames of files when you record Raw. Now, Blackmagic Raw keeps it in one file and it's easier on the computer and you can play it and still have the same functionality in editing Raw. Now, I did hear somewhere that there was an issue with kind of bringing down the highlights with Blackmagic Raw at the higher compression, but I don't know, I guess I'll test it out. First, I was a little hesitant because I do like the, when you do uncompressed Cinema DNG, you can actually pull those raw frames, get just a still, and then edit it in uh, Lightroom. However, if you've seen my previous videos, I, I find it easier to actually color grade and DaVinci Resolve, and then if I want to do a little bit more tweaks, I'll just take the output of JPEG and edit it in Lightroom. So not a big deal for me. And the fact that it cleans up the files, makes it one file is pretty cool. Now someone said that, oh yeah, now you could record raw to the SD card. Well, that was something that we could already do. I'm recording this raw right now and it's recording to a UHS-1 card, which I've also said in my previous videos and with no quality issues. Compressed four to one, not a problem. No skip frames, no problems. Now I can't do 60, but I can do 24 on the SD card. Anyway, let me jump to my final thoughts and after I review the footage and update the, the <laughs> damn thing. This is taking so long. It's been so long since I uploaded. Just want to finish. Anyway, let's go. All right, now first after recording some slow-mo footage that I set up in the studio i kind of knew the answer to this before i even started but i went to adobe premiere and i tried to see if black magic raw was 
directly uploadable in Adobe Premiere. And Premiere doesn't even recognize that the file exists when you're looking for it through the media browser. So I went into DaVinci Resolve and in DaVinci Resolve, you have to make sure that you have the latest update to DaVinci Resolve because if you don't, it's not gonna recognize the file either. But once I recognized the file and something that wasn't talked about anywhere, I mean, I'd heard things about Blackmagic Raw being softer than Cinema DNG, which was pretty common, but I didn't hear or find anywhere mentioned that the actual raw controls are slightly different when compared to a Cinema DNG file. Now, you still have control over color temperature, tint, and saturation and contrast controls, and also ISO as well. But some of the brightness controls and controlling your highlights and sharpness are completely removed in Blackmagic RAW. So I don't know if that's on purpose. They let you adjust white level and black level, whereas Cinema DNG didn't exactly let you do that. So it's slightly different. I don't know if there's this particular advantage one over the other, but I just wanted to make you aware that that's a significant change that I noticed, and one of the first changes that I noticed when I uploaded the file. But other than that, I had similar flexibility as I did previously with Cinema DNG files, as well as the fact that when I output the files, the quality was excellent. Slightly softer, yes enough to impact it? No. I actually noticed that this softer image has a bit of noise reduction applied to it. So that's kind of what probably makes it a bit softer. But that's it. As always, like, share, and you can make my day. If you subscribe today, this is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later.